Rio Madrid is interested in Bruno Fernandes, who is having a very fantastic World Cup, two, two games and obviously four goal involvements. Stalling your breast and putting up to assists against Ghana, that's Bruno Fernandes for you. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer has gone ahead and rewatched all his 168 matches he managed at Manchester United. And lastly, we are going to talk about Marcus Rashford's huge contract that United is planning to go ahead and really give him at all Trafford. Welcome to United Matters channel. How are you guys and where are you watching us from? Rock and David is my name. Remember, we are on to the milestone of 9,000 of of 10,000 subscribers. That's it. I believe we are left with 900 now. Guys, endeavor to subscribe to this channel. Lower right bottom corner, that's the place to be. After going to the lower right bottom corner, smash the subscription button. After smashing it, hit the notification bell. That will enable you to get notified every time I upload a video onto this channel. Now, yesterday or today, there is record Portugal coming in for Portuguese source from Portugal telling us that Real Madrid are interested in signing Manchester United midfielder Bruno Fernandes are watching him closely at the World Cup. Now, this source is coming in from Portugal. I cannot come out and really put it to the level of being a tier 1 source or second tier source because loads of news from him have been so much, so much, uh, so much not exact and... Uh, he always comes in and really puts in stories concerning transfers that are really not all that right. And I think he only got the deal of of Fabio Vieira to Arsenal right. Um, and some other deals from Portugal right. But I believe everything that he does has a little bit of truthness in it. And obviously this is where I've chose to come out and be react to the story of Bruno Fernandes. But the fact is... No team in the world wouldn't have, wouldn't wouldn't love to have a midfielder like Bruno Fernandes. That's it. One, he is a modern central attack midfielder who has goals and assists with him. His numbers are ridiculous. His numbers are ridiculous because he has just made a hundred games for United in the Premier League. But this guy has close to sixty goal involvements with close to is it thirty eight goals in the Premier League and twenty two assist in the Premier League. When you look at the stats, no team wouldn't love to be having a player like Bruno. And way back when he was having programmatic managers like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, his name, his game had never gone to the next level. But the coming in of Eric Ten Hag, he has coached Bruno into a perfect central attack midfielder. Though he is still putting out Hollywood passes that are really uncalled for and aimless passes. You get some flicks that will result in United conceding but I believe he is turning into a more, more better player. There are certain different things you see that Bruno is doing. That's why you see to it that even in the Portuguese national side, he is having two goals and one and two assists, meaning that he's the top scorer of Portugal and is having the most number of shots at a side which goes by the names of Real Madrid. Sorry, at the side of Manchester United and Portugal. So whatever he's putting up on the field of play, Real Madrid have to go on and chase after him because he's the next big thing. Trust me, he is the next big thing. When you look at the available central midfielders that are in his age, I think he's one of the best. Uh, when you look at Kevin De Bruyne, he's 30 plus. Modric is gone. Which other player can I put into that category? I think he's one of the best Celtic midfielders in the world that you're seeing. Ericsson is in the 30s and Bruno is just 27. You know, in the, at the age of 27 in football, you are just hitting your prime. What does that mean? It means that Madrid would want to come out and really sign this player. You get because of what he's doing, but I believe Bruno has a lot to do to Manchester United. Believes that he should be among those players that should get United where they are, and I believe he's not going to be like Cristiano Ronaldo. He won't betray United and leave and go elsewhere because right now the Premier League is the most competitive league in the world. That's it. And by the time Ronaldo was in the Premier League, there were doubts that maybe La Liga is really one of the best in there for you, and obviously he left. You get what Ferguson called a betrayal. But I believe in Eric Ten Hag that he has everything to do to Bruno Fernandes. He's improving his game. Even Bruno himself is gating in the know that he is really one of those players that are really gating in the 
right put of the manager and this is duplicated all transferred all mirrored at the national team before they came to the world cup they first played a team they first played a team which goes by names of nigeria bruno went ahead to score a brace in that game now in the world cup in the first two games they played he put up two assists against ghana and scored two goals against a team which goes by the names of mm, what's the name of the team they beat to nil um because in that group I think it's Uruguay, yeah, Uruguay. So they put two goals past Uruguay. So it shows you that Bruno is really on fire and Real Madrid wouldn't not like to get a player like him. Reason being, they are looking for replacement of Luka Modric. Luka Modric is now 38 years of age. You've seen him at the World Cup, though he's playing deep, but I believe the age is really saying bye-bye or waving bye-bye to him. He cannot be that player he was anymore. And that midfield three of Real Madrid that are really rebuilding with Chamavinga and Chiomini, when you add in a Bruno Fernandes, it would be a very good, good midfield. And this is where I believe Real Madrid are regretting for them not to put back a buy back close in the contract of a player whom they released to Arsenal, who goes by names of Martin Odegaard. They sold him to Arsenal at 30 million pounds. If at all they had a buy back close, I think he would have been one of those players. They would have gone and resigned at Real Madrid. Reason being, this player is rampant, is on fire, and I believe he is really one of the players that are in his age bracket the best in the world. And to me, on any day, I've always told you, have a much support Manchester United. I believe Odegaard does does the role of a central attack midfield, attack midfielder better than a player who goes by the names of Bruno Fernandes. And I believe the coming in of, of Eric Ten Hag might really add loads of things to Bruno Fernandes' game to get out the best out of him. And I believe when Bruno hits his... When Bruno improves a little bit of the things he's supposed to be doing, like in dedicating the game and control, and not doing those Hollywood passes and flicks that are uncalled for, I believe he can be one of the best central midfielders in the world. But Odegaard, at the age of 2023, he's doing exactly what Bruno is supposed to be doing. And this season, he has added on goals at Arsenal, six goals in the season of the Premier League and close to four assists. Those are 10 goal involvements for a team which goes by the names of Arsenal, meaning that Bruno needs to go on and do the needful to see to it that he does the needful. But that does not really put him out of the contention of replacing Luka Modric at, at Real Madrid. But... Another story from the same guy has told us that Bruno Fernandes feels satisfied and complete at Manchester United. He's focused on objectives at Manchester United despite Real Madrid's, Madrid's interest. And there are two different things right now. I know these players that really come in from Latin America and um, that speak Latini are really having their final destination in football as Real Madrid and Barcelona. That's it. Way back, even Juventus and AC Milan or Inter Milan were their destinations. But right now, I believe football has drawn a very huge corner and the Premier League is everything you need to go on and redo the need for. One thing that the Premier League is lacking is to go on and present a player that is really winning Ballon d'Or's season in, season out. And I believe Premier League is no far from doing that because every time teams win the Premier League, so to win the Champions League, especially in the in the Premier League, from the Premier League, they don't really have players that have stood out. When when Chelsea won it, no player in that squad really stood out. When Liverpool won it, obviously Mohamed Salah got out. Sorry, Mohamed Salah was there. They beat that was twenty. I think it was twenty. Was it twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen? One of those. That's when Liverpool won it, and I think the Ballon d'Or was given to the Ballon d'Or was given to Luka Modric that's it because of the World Cup that's it but Mohamed Salah really never had a very good World Cup because I think he played even one game remember in the finale of the Champions League I think he was his his shoulder was turned around so I believe if we get teams like Manchester United winning the Champions League and players like Bruno Fernandes go all out there and shine throughout, the Ballando will be theirs. You saw what happened at Real Madrid. If it was not if it was not Salah, it was going to be Karim Benzema. Salah missed out on winning it after Thibaut Courtois saved close to four or five shots of his. And even 
Karim Benzema, who scored close to 10, 15, we are there 14 goals, went ahead to lead to lead Real Madrid to the final to the final, though he never scored in the final, but obviously he was the main man for Real Madrid and he won it. So that's what the Premier League needs to do. But I believe if I told Bruno is to be sold, I think his net worth, I think his sell value is at a hundred million pounds, according to me. So let's wait and see what this is going to be like at Manchester United. And I believe maybe later, Eric Ten Hag will at a point X say, all right, let me release Bruno, depending on how his midfield be standing. If at all he brings in Zidane Iqbal and uh, Charlie Savage to come in and the minors, if they reach that level in the one, one or two next seasons of being on the level of playing and competing and really representing United to the best and the fullest, maybe Ten Hag will say, all right, it's time for Bruno to be moved on and get some money in to buy in some players. And this is what this is what this is what Liverpool went ahead to do. Liverpool sold Coutinho to Barcelona at 130 million pounds, and they got two best players that have really gone ahead to describe their seasons of winning the Champions League and winning what we call the Premier League. That is Alison Baker, he came in close to 70 million pounds plus. Virgil van Dijk at 75, 145 million pounds. From the sale of one player, they brought in two new players that the club was really lacking. And ever since then, no one is still regretting for the sale of Coutinho from Liverpool to Barcelona. So that might be another option, but that is going to be like two or three years to come from now. Reason being, Bruno is tied to a contract of Manchester United until, is it 2027? That's it, because it was extended it was extended towards the end of last season and Bruno now earns close to £250,000 a week from Manchester United. Remember, he was earning £100,000 ever since he came in from Sporting Lisbon. So I believe Bruno is still with us and he's going nowhere. Now, the other player that I believe is still with Manchester United but his contract needs to be hurriedly worked on is Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford is left with six months on his contract with one year to be triggered and united are planning to go on and do the needful and keep marcus rashford close to them now john cross of the mirror has come out and confirmed to us that <clears throat> manchester united intend to activate the one-year option on marcus rashford's contract united also want to reward him for his current form by offering him a new long-term contract rashford's priority is to stay at the club. I believe these players are really aiming at getting United to the levels where it was. And the moment they do it, to win the Premier League, to go on and compete for all compete in the Champions League favorably and win it maybe, then they would have really fulfilled their dreams. And guess who really let the cart out of the bag? It was Diego Dello. After having four successful wins against Liverpool, Leicester City, Southampton and Arsenal, Diego Dello came out and told a Portugal outlet that, that their motivation of running and putting in consistent performance at Manchester United is simple. They want to be the boys responsible for getting United back to the glory days that we had under Alex Ferguson and the likes of Marcus Rashford, Bruno Fernandes, Anton Martial are going nowhere. Trust me, these players are going nowhere. They want to see United get back to where it's supposed to be. And the only thing that has been lacking in this team was, sorry, has always been the manager. I remember in 2021, was it 2020, 2021? In 2021, as we as we came i think as we came to the end of the year of 2020 in december united entered the new year when they are topping the table and they were two points ahead of a team which goes by names of man city guess what happened we lost to sheffield at old trafford we went ahead to draw against leicester city and there's another game that we lost three games in the row i think we got only one point you get what, the, what did that mean? It meant that we are having a manager who is known to experience in such situations, however much he was a player in that United side that used to go on and overcome such situations, but he was not the manager by then. But just imagine if at all Eric Ten Hag was the manager by then. 
he would have gone ahead to deploy tactics that would have really gave Man City a very hard time. And what shows you that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was really an ill manager from being ahead of Man City by three points at the beginning of the year of 2021 to a United ending the season when Man City was close to 9-10 points ahead of us. It shows you how bad we were. And all that was because of the manager. So, I believe we are having one of the best managers in the world, according to me. Rashford can win a ball at Manchester United. Bruno can win it. Anthony can win it. Martial can win it, provided we stay as one team. And they also know it, that everyone was against them last season. Bruno was not performing. Martial was not performing. Injured game in, game out. Rashford was really badly off. Ever since I saw him play in that red shirt of United, that was his worst season at Manchester United. The other player, even the Sanchos, and they know that it's now a time to pay back to the fans. And guess what? It's Eric Ten Hag that has masterminded this to see to it that these players are really going to go on and really stay. But I'm really so much hailed and I'm really so much happy for Rashford that his priority is to stay at the club. And with how he's performing, you know that very many clubs will come in for him. PSG had a meeting with his brother way back in the summer. But obviously, Rashford said, I'm going to stay at Manchester United. And Eric Ten Hag said, Rashford is untouchable. But for me, I told people, if Atoli wants to go, let him go because we are having very many other good players that can come in. Because if Rashford left, Alejandro Ganache would have had enough playing time. That's it. And obviously, selling Rashford by then would have got us close to £70 million. If we get £70 million from Rashford and you're having Eric Ten Hag, he can get you some two good players that can come in and do the job. Like Cody Gapko coming in at like £40 million. Then the remaining 30 can get you another player that can equally do what Rashford is doing for United. But the good thing is that Rashford rejected everything and said, I'm here to get myself into the form I'm supposed to be in at Manchester United. Then the manager that was sacked towards the end of November last year, that is Oliguna Sosia, has come out and really watched all the games of Manchester United that he was their manager. That is Oliguna Sosia, the story being reported by The Athletic. Oliguna Sosia has rewatched all 168 matches from this time as a United manager. You see, I don't want to talk about Sosia a lot because I never believed, I at once believed in him, but the way he really handled the situation of bringing Ronaldo at Manchester United is what really put him off. One, start to show that whenever you bring Ronaldo in your team, goals get distributed unevenly. The other players that have been scoring in the club find themselves not scoring because Ronaldo is really a very huge figure in front of them. Every time they opt to go on and shoot or do something different, they'll say, all right, let me look for Ronaldo. And even this season, you've seen it affect people like Anthony. Anthony was a player who wished a lot for Ronaldo to score goals because Ronaldo was not scoring goals every time he got chances. And every time Anthony would try to go in for an assist of Ronaldo, he wouldn't find him. And secondly, sometimes he found himself in a particular situation to go on and take a shot, and he wouldn't take a shot. He was looking in for Cristiano Ronaldo, something that I really hated about a player who goes by the names of Anthony. And see, the games that we're going to hit to score very many goals, Ronaldo has not been in. Our goals are now evenly distributed. You get so, I believe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got that wrong, and I believe he got lots of things wrong. And one thing he never coped about Alex Ferguson was one, that Alex Ferguson was a manager and not a coach. What he did was to go out and scout and get in those coaches that are really on fire. You get the Carlos Cruzes of this world. Even Phelan was once a coach of Manchester United, assistant coach of Manchester United. Um, which other? He had, he had like... Even McLaren was was there. He used to change them according to the game plan and where the game of football had changed too. So I think Oliguna Sosha just lacked a coach on his side to go on and really win him the games of football. Not so. So I think it's good for him to watch all the 168 matches he managed at Manchester United because he needs to see where 
where he got it wrong. But obviously, where he got it wrong, firstly, Harry Maguire, his captain, led to his sacking. You get, he brought him back. He hurried him back from injury. In the game of Leicester City, Harry Maguire costed us. In the game of Watford, did the same thing. He costed us. And I wonder how a manager at, the, at his level couldn't go out and make such a decision. You get, was it because he's the one who really recommended for the signing of Harry Maguire? No doubt. But look at Eric Ten Hag and how he's taking up things at Manchester United. Even if he bought you and you're not performing very well, he takes you on the bench and gets another player. And he has shown everyone at the club that no one is guaranteed to start. There is no favoritism. Everyone goes on the field of play on merit. So guys, what are your thoughts on Bruno Fernandes for Real Madrid? Marcus Rashford, new contract on the way. And obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer reviewing his games that he managed at Manchester United. Your reactions are welcome in the comment section. Please smash the like button, comment and share. I sign out for now. See you later as I hand you over in the hands of the might lord to watch you over. Me out for now. See you back. I'll see you then.